Hallelujah. Good morning, saints. Welcome to Morning Manor with Apostle Juliana. Jesus is Lord. What a morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And surely you and I are going to be glad and rejoice in it. Why don't we bow our heads in prayer? Father, we thank you for this great morning. We thank you for the gift of life. The Lord will daily load with us with blessing. The Lord of our salvation. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the work of Calvary. For now, our children of God, partakers and participators of your divine nature, we say thank you. Father, thank you have translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of your marvel, dear son. We say thank you. Father, we say thank you, for we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Father, we say thank you. We say thank you for life. For we've got the newness of life in Christ Jesus. We say thank you. Father, we say thank you. We say thank you. We are now part of the commonwealth of God. We say thank you. We say thank you for your love has been brought, shared abroad in our hearts. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you have made us in Christ Jesus. We are above all because we are of Christ. In Jesus' name, thank you for the remission of sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for eternal life. We have been translated from darkness to light. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, good morning, saints. I'm so excited because my Bible tells me that the entrance of God's word bringeth light. So today, as we gather together around the word of God, light is coming your way. Light is coming my way. In Jesus' name. Our departure scripture today. John chapter 8, verse 44. Glory to Jesus. John chapter 8, verse 44. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The Bible says, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to, to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. Where, when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Wow. This morning, we are going to talk about the lies of the devil. Thank you, men of God. The lies of the devil. The devil is a liar. From the beginning, he was a liar. From the beginning, he was a liar. And up to now, he used lies. When he deceived Eve in the God of Eve, he used lies. He said, did God say in the New Testament, when the Lord Jesus Christ came <coughs> to redeem us, he wanted to pause as an angel of light, an angel of help before our Lord and our Savior, telling him things. But the Lord Jesus Christ conquered through the word of God. That's why we emphasize in El Shaddai, the word, the word, the word. That's why the apostle always tell us we have to stick to the word. We have to stick to the word. So that is the antidote. That is the, 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 the power we have against all the works of the enemy. The word. The Lord Jesus Christ used the word. Today, I just want us to emphasize on the lies of the enemy. The common lies of the enemy. Which he says. And we want to say, what does the word of God say about it? Number one. The word of, I mean, the enemy will tell you, will whisper in your ear and tell you, you can't trust God. You can do it yourself. There are people, even believers, who believe, now I can do it myself. 
I've got the ability. I can do it myself. But what does the Bible tell us? Hallelujah. Our ability is of God. Our sufficiency is of God. We have to learn to rely on God. We should rely on God. Because when God is in it, we know we'll go through. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Thank you. Glory to Jesus. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Putting all the full armor of God so that we can stand against the schemes of the enemy. Glory to Jesus. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authority, against powers, against dark, against Against, against the powers of darkness of this world and against the spiritual forces in the heavenly places. So as a believer, as a person, we have to put the whole armor of God. We have to rely on God. Glory to Jesus. The enemy whispered to you, you, you can do it on your own. No, you can't do it on your own, my beloved. We have to know that we have to depend on God. We have to know that God is our source. We have to rely in God, with God. Apostle Paul says, you know, not that I'm sufficient in my own self. My sufficient is of God. He talks about the grace of God. I he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Not that I, but the grace which is working me. My brother, my sister, for you to make it in that career, for you to make it in that marriage, for you to make it in that business, in that project, in that ministry, it's not your own doing. It's the grace working in you. It's the abilities of God. I want to speak to somebody under the sound of my voice. Let's go near to rely. Let's go near to trust on the Lord. Let's go near to look on him. Everything we do, let's commit it to him. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The other lie the devil always tells us and whispers to us in the journey of life, things happen, stuff happen, we meet life. I always say that. But there are things he whispers to us. He will tell you, you are not adequate enough. You are not good enough. You are not cool enough. You are not good enough in that marriage. You are not good enough in that ministry. You are not good enough to be that mother for those children. You are not good enough. You are not adequate enough. You don't have it all. That's the lie of the enemy. He whispers in the mind. That's why the Bible tells us we have to guard our mind jealously. For out of it comes issues of life. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We are equipped of God. We are enabled by God. Hallelujah. You are adequate enough. If he calls me, you will equip me. If he tells me, you will equip me. He tells you that so that you can shipwreck your faith. He tells you that so that you cannot do what God has called you to do. What does the Bible say? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us Ephesians 3, verse 10. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. His intent was that now through the church, the manifested wisdom of God would be made known to rulers and authorities in the heavenly, in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. How? It, the, his wisdom is made known through the church. Who is the church? It's us. I'm adequate enough. His wisdom, his manifest wisdom will be made to the nation, to the principalities, to the powers through us. Can we put amplified version there for me, Pastor? Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. It says that the purpose is that through the church, the purpose is that through the church, the, com the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God is in its infinite vari varieties and in, in innumerable, innumerable aspects might be made known to the angelic rulers and authority, principalities and powers in the heavenly spheres. Thank you, men of God. You know, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God is sufficient for you. You are adequate enough. You can do it. If you go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, you are adequate enough. You can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Yes, all means Oh, You can do that marriage through Christ. You can do that ministry through Christ. Whatever you face, whatever tribulation, whatever you go through, you can do it all through Christ who strengthened you. You can raise those children through Christ. 
not that we are sufficient of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. You can do it. You can go through. He is well able. He will take you through. He will see you through in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to Jesus. You are able. I want you to type, if you are under the sound of my voice, that I am good enough. I am adequate enough. God is well able. God equips us. If he gives you an assignment, he will give you the ability. To Moses, you know, he said, I stammer. But look, God gave him an arm. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. When the work was overwhelming in the wilderness, God was so faithful. The 70 elders came on board. You are good enough. God will enable you, enable you. God will give you ability in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people say, I have to be perfect for God to love me. Yeah, I'm talking to believers. I have to be perfect. If things go wrong on our lives, you hear some believers say, what did I do wrong, God? What did I do wrong? What did I do? I have to be perfect for God to love me. That's not the gospel. Hallelujah. He made us perfect in him. <laughs> it's not us, but in Christ. We are now in Christ. Our lives are hidden with Christ in God. So it's not your perfection which you make God to love you. It's not your perfection that which you make God to, to progress. It's not what you did, you know, which you make what you do, you know, list. You know, it's our own righteousness. We are not talking about our own righteousness. The Bible tells us our righteousness are like filthy rags before God. We are talking about the righteousness of Christ. He is the righteousness of God. He made us righteous. We have got the right standing with God through Christ Jesus, through the price paid once and for all. So there's nothing I will do. There's nothing I can do for me to be righteous. There's nothing I can do for God to accept us. Let's go to Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Oh, glory to Jesus. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible says, but God demonstrate his own love for us in this while we were sinners. Christ died for us. He demonstrated through our own love. He loved us as is us while we were still dead in sin. And now we are in Christ Jesus. He still loves us. Let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse 38. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 verse 38. It says, For I am convinced that neither death or life, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future or any power, hallelujah, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is that love Christ did give us. That love will never separate us. It's not what you do. It's not what I do. It's not what I'm good at. It's what he has made us. The love of God. The love of God was shared and brought in our hearts. Pastor, if you can get TPT version for me, can you, can you, can you put it for me? Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 It says, yet even in the midst of these things, we triumph over all. For God has made us more than conquerors and has demonstrated his love in our glorious victory in everything. He has demonstrated our love. You know, he loves us. He has got the love. The Bible says the love of God has been shared abroad in our hearts. So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe that has power to separate us from the love of God. I live in the confidence. That's a confidence you need. That's the confidence in what I need. Hallelujah. That we can live through the power of, that we can, we can, we, we can live in the universe with the power. To, you know, there's nothing in the universe with power to separate us from the love of God. I am convinced that his love will triumph over death, life, trouble, fallen angels, darkness, dark, dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or our future circumstances that can weaken his love. Wow, that's powerful. Thank you, men of God. There's nothing which can weaken our love, his love for us. There's nothing. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing which I can't do. There's nothing which anyone else can do, can say. Whether a pastor, whether an apostle, wherever any individual, there's nothing which any individual can do to separate you, 
to separate me from the love of God is something which is worth noting. So that in our hearts, no matter what we go through, whether death come our way, whether sickness come our way, legs come our way, we must know that God still loves him. His love is constant. It never changes. The Bible tells us he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Another myth, the devil tells people, I have to be perfect for God to use me. Hmm? God used the perfect. I'm not yet ready. You know, I've got these weaknesses. God can't use me. You know, we are talking in this month. It's our month, you know, of arising and building. And there are some people who are sticking to their, to their chairs. Why? Because they think we are not perfect enough. God doesn't use the perfect. God used the ones he had reconciling to himself. Hallelujah. We are still moving unto perfection. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Our perfection, you know, are in him. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. The old has gone away. Behold, the new is here. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, man of God. The new is here. The new is next in Christ. The Bible says, let us participate in the newness of life, which is in Christ Jesus. We are not supposed to look at what we do, but what he does through us. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. If we check the word of God, people whom he called, you know, you can see even the Lord Jesus Christ, the people whom he called, you know, you know, you know, you know, they were not perfect people. They were ordinary people. He called the tax collectors, he called the ordinary people. He used Apostle Paul. We are all preaching Apostle Paul. What? You know, you know, he was a murderer, but God visited him and changed his life. Oh, hallelujah. What can I say this morning? God can use anyone if you are willing and obedient. God can use you. If you say yes, as Apostle Paul said, King Agrippa, I was not disab disobedient to the heavenly vision. That would be your portion. The other thing is the enemy ever lied to us. He said, I will never, you will be talking to yourself, you know, God will never forgive me. I will never forgive myself. They will not forgive me. I will never forgive them. Forgiveness, which will lead to bitterness. Forgiveness. Which will lead to, to uh, which will, which will, which will lead to bitterness, forgiveness, which will lead to depression, forgiveness, which will lead just to separate us from the fellowship with God. It's un, you know, you know, you know, it's it's it, I mean, unforgiveness. I want to say unforgiveness, which will be used by the enemy, you know, so that we will be down, so that he can cheat us out twice. Today, I want to encourage you that you can forgive. Never say I can never forgive. You. I can never forgive you. I can never forgive that institution. Some of us, we are bitter with companies we worked for. We are bitter with individuals. We are bitter with churches. We are bitter with pastors. We are bitter with our family members. We are bitter with our leaders. We are bitter with people who bitter, bitter with people who we meet in life. It's a lie of the devil. You can forgive. I read something which was life transforming for me some weeks ago, which says, forgive even before people ask for forgiveness from you. Forgive even before even people see that they've wronged you. Learn to forgive. The act of forgiveness. We all need it. Otherwise, without it, the devil, you know, will cheat us. Forgiveness is free. You are free to forgive. It's a choice you make. Make the choice to forgive. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. You are free. Pray for the people. You increase your freedom. The Bible says it was for Freedom that Christ has set us free. I'm speaking to people under the sound of my voice. Forgive your spouse. There are people who stay in the same house. They are holding to what happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Forgive your spouse. Forgive your family member. Forgive your cousin. It brings liberty to you. It brings your own freedom. Hallelujah. Choose to forgive. God wants us to forgive. The word of God commands us to forgive. Why are you holding? You are singing in the choir, holding unforgiveness. You are praying, holding unforgiveness. You are preaching, holding unforgiveness. You are just cheating yourself. You know, you are leading people, holding unforgiveness. It's just going to burn you. Hallelujah. It's just going to destroy you. It's like you are keeping poison in you. That poison will destroy you. That poison will eat you up. That poison will paralyze you. What we must do in life, that people will ever make mistakes around us. Willingly and unwillingly. 
you know, unnoticingly they will make it. We have to have a willing heart to forgive each other. Let's go to Luke chapter 23, verse 33 and, and 34. Luke chapter 23, it says, when they come to a place, to a place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with criminals, one on the right, one on the left, verse 34. Then Jesus said, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes and by casting, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Yes, <clears throat> it was painful, it was a process, <clears throat> but the Lord Jesus Christ teaches us a principle for life there that we have to forgive. Forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Hallelujah. The Bible encourages us that even if people wrong us, we have to forgive seven times, seven times a day. So I encourage you that you not be a person who carries unforgiveness. The other thing is fear. The devil will lie to you that I'm really afraid. I'm really afraid. I'm really afraid. I'm really afraid. But fear is not our portion. If we go to the word of God, God does not want us to fear. He wants us to trust in him. I'm really afraid. Fear will take you not from taking opportunities. I'm afraid of getting married. I'm afraid of having children. I'm afraid of working. I'm afraid of the darkness at night. I'm afraid of you know, new, new vengeance. Fear is the tool of the devil so that you don't go into new territories. It's a, it's a tool of the devil so that he can snare you. It can paralyze you. Let's just go to Psalms 56 verse 3. What does the Bible tell us? Psalm 53 says, I am afraid. I am afraid I put my trust in you. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Today, if you're under the sound of my voice, the thing only which will take your fear is to put your trust in the Lord. Let's trust in him. Let's rely on him. He will take us through. Let's go to Psalms 34 verse 4. Psalms 34 verse 4. The Bible says, I sought for the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from my fears. Today, if you're under the sound of my voice, I don't know what are your fears. There is a remedy for fear. Seek the Lord. Bask in his word. Because where there's fear, faith is drawing away. As you bask in his word, as you pray to him, indeed the fear will go. Let fear go. Fear is a snake. Let's go to Psalms 23 verse 4. Psalms 23 verse 4. Glory to Jesus. Even though I walk through the shadow of the, the, the dark valley, I, I will not fear evil. For you are with me. You are with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. God is faithful. God is good. He is with you. He is for you. If God is for you, who can be against you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? There is nobody. No situation. You will go through whatever it seems. You know, you walk with you. You will be with you. Hallelujah. Some people will say, I'm here. Nothing's going to change. My past has defined me. I want to know that, you know, what is past is past. It mustn't influence your future. Let's just go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Glory says, I have been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in my body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I have been crucified with Christ. Thank you, men of God. Hallelujah. There are some people born again. They believe what happened. The past still define their lives. What their ancestors did, what they did then, is to influence their life. Let me tell you, we are delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has translated us. Yes, you know, we go, we get prayer, we get delivered, but we can't continue just to sit there. That because they did this, I'm not going to change. Change is your portion. The past mustn't define you. You are defined now by the word of God. At least we make the power of the cross of no effect. Ah, they ever divorced in my tribe are also divorced. You are now in Christ Jesus. 
change is your portion. Whatever tormented them, whatever you know, 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 you know destroy them, mustn't, mustn't, mustn't destroy you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people say change is too hard. I will never change. I will stay where I am. My brother, my sister. That's the lie of the devil. God wants you to grow. God wants you to change. Let's go to Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Change is your portion. Growth is your portion. Hallelujah. The Bible says, all oh, the deep of the riches of wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable is his judgment and his path beyond tracing, tracing out. Can I have an amplified version? Men of God, thank you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the deep of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unfundable, inscrutable, unsearchable, and his, ah, his judgment, his decision, and how untraceable, mysterious, undiscoverable are the ways, are, are his ways, his methods, and his path. Hallelujah. Things can change your way. Trust God. He has got so many, he has got so many, many strategies for you to change. I don't know what I've been facing. It can be 10 years without a job, 5 years without a job, without income. I don't know what's on your path. Things not working. There's that unre un 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 unsearchable wisdom of God. It will work through you. It will work for you. Believe God. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The enemy will tell you, you're too tired, you're too old, you can't do it. What does the Bible say? Come all you who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Hallelujah. If we go to him, the Bible says, those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Today, I know it's October, you know, the year is closing in. Some people feel very tired. They feel they want to give up. Yes, there's a place for physical health rest. But sometimes your inner man can even be tired. I want to encourage you. Go seek God. Go seek God. Go seek God. Bask in his presence. As we wait for him, he renews our strength. Like they re earned strength of the eagle. The book of you know, Isaiah tells us that you know, the young, women, the young will, will grow weary. You know, flowers will fade. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall, they know, you know, you know, they shall renew their strength. That's your portion this morning. Your strength is being renewed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I close today, walk on your tomorrow. You know, it's the, the myth of the enemy that nobody loves me. Most people commit suicide. Most people give up. Most people give in on destiny, on life, because they think nobody loves me. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. But that's the lie of the enemy. For God loves the world. God loves you. If you go to John chapter 3, verse 16, hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever loves you, you know, who not perish but have eternal life. Thank you, man of God. God loves you. The Bible says greater love than this, that a man share his love for life for his brethren. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are not alone. The Bible says, don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit which abides, which lives in you. The Holy Spirit with you, is with you. You are never alone. Don't give up. Don't give in. Talk the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the teacher. You know, the teacher, the instructor. He will teach us. He will direct us. Today, if you are under the sound of my voice, I want you to pray for your family. I want you to pray for yourself that Lord, expose all the lies of the enemy in my path. May the lies of the enemy not prevail in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know he's the father of all lies. Those lies mustn't stand in our destiny. We are people of the truth and the truth will set us free. We are people of the truth and the truth will enlarge our territory, will enlarge our path, will enlarge our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in Jesus' name we thank you. Whatever lies the enemy is said to us, and is ever whispering to us today for those under the sound of my voice. May illumination come. May they see and cancel those lies. As you said in your word, every word which rises in judgment against us, we shall condemn. We condemn words. We condemn writings. We condemn whispering of the enemy. Mindsets. 
we condemn words bombarding our heart, minds to destroy us. You know, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for victory. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for what you did on the cross of Calvary. For we have got victory against the enemy, even through your conquering on the cross, through the word you gave us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, saints, and good morning. If you are here, you are not born again, you have not met Jesus as the Lord of your life, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. With my mouth, I confess. With my heart, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you have made that prayer, you are now born again. God bless you. You have a blessed morning ahead. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Zako Jadane Zariando Sutaye Wherever you are listening to us now Radoja Pray in the Holy Ghost Pray in the Holy Ghost Arada Bakoyani Nano Jadai Zariado Sado Kaya Yeah!